I have a bit of a reputation for building exclusively blue suburban homes in The Sims 4. I can't deny this, it's true, I just, I like how they look and we have a lot of nice blue things in the game, okay? But this one is not a blue suburban, okay? It might be blue, but it is not a suburban house, I promise. When you look up pictures of Greek houses online, you see a lot of these like really pretty white houses with blue accents, like blue shutters, blue doors, blue fences and stuff, and it is so beautiful. And so today I was kind of inspired by that and I tried to build something a little bit similar. I will say that by no means is this like an accurate Greek house. I've never been to Greece, I'm a silly little Florida girl, so I don't really know what they're like inside. And also a lot of the architecture that you see online when you look up those Greek houses is kind of hard to recreate in The Sims. There's a lot of like arches and railings and walls that are done with like the matching stucco and we just can't do that. Like I don't even have a fence railing that matches the walls perfectly. So I did my best to make it look sort of inspired by those Greek houses and kind of similar to the vibes, but it is really by no means the same. The roof line is also not even remotely accurate to any pictures I was seeing. I just really wanted to use that blue tile roof and so I did, but that's the thing. It's the Sims. It's never going to be perfectly accurate to real life. I was just trying to have fun building a pretty house, which by the way ended up being a giant house. This house has a lot of bedrooms. Well, it only has four. It's got four bedrooms. There's one bedroom in the main house downstairs and then two upstairs. And then kind of off to the right, there's like a secondary building or like a grandparent suite. And so I made that into a bedroom as well. This house feels like it would be kind of good for legacy gameplay, to be honest, because it has that space with an ensuite bathroom for the grandparents that's kind of separate, but it's still attached to the main house. This place would sell for a lot of money in real life, given that attached in-law suite. But it also has a lot of of really nice exterior spaces going on. When I was looking at pictures online, it seemed like there was a lot of patios and like balconies and lots of exterior stairs everywhere. So I kind of tried to do that here. You can see I made use of some platforms and also some stairs on the outside and I tried to have it be kind of like multi-leveled. The stairs in the front of the house are kind of like a focal point there in the middle. And then to the right of the house, there's like a pool courtyard area that also has some stairs. In the front, there's like two courtyard areas. There's a bar under the pergola. Like there really is a lot of outdoor space here and the thing is it's all in the front of the house Which is kind of different for me Usually I would put all of the backyard things in the back But on this particular lot I built this in Tartosa Which is the world that came with the wedding pack and this is that 30 by 20 lot kind of in the way back of the world Where a starter home usually is I bulldozed the starter home and then built this here But the back of the lot is kind of just nothing. It's like rocks and trees It's still really pretty but the main view is off to the front of the building out of the front window Windows, there's a waterfall, there's a beach, there's like a lagoon your sims can swim in. So that's like the main view in my mind. So I made like all of the main stuff in the front kind of facing all of that. But because I did that, like all of the space is in the front and the house is like right up against the back of the lot. There isn't really a lot of space behind it at all. Even that's an understatement. There's like one tile back there. So I tried to put a bit of landscaping to like make the back of the house seem a little bit nicer. But I will admit the back of the house is kind of ugly. It's like kind of just big flat walls. Walls, so <laughs> don't look back there. The front is good. The front is fine. Ignore the back. To get the look that I was going for, I used kind of a combination of the base game archways that have like the little blue railing in them. They're actually classed as windows, but it's like the same as the base game arch your Sims can walk through. It just has like the railing there, but it matches the color scheme perfectly. And it's kind of a nice like open air sort of vibe to the house. And then I also combined it with the wedding stories windows, like the ones that came with this pack. It's a little bit difficult because we only got two windows with the pack, which made it kind of hard to use them. This is the problem when they do these like packs that have really tiny build mode additions. What am I supposed to do with two windows? I need like four or five variants of different sizes to be able to make something work, but we only got two and I felt like it was probably okay for this particular build. I also used the white swatch. I was kind of struggling between wanting to use like some base game windows that had like a dark blue and then also wanting to use these because I loved the shape of them, but I settled on these ones and then like added blue accents elsewhere. There's like a super cute cute little fountain with some blue tile downstairs. We have like the bluish tile from Jungle Adventure downstairs. Honestly, even like the blue water from the pool kind of kind of makes it all work together nicely. I did warn you, this house is like very blue, but in my defense, that is like very much the style of the building, okay? That's just like what I was going for. I mentioned this earlier, but I, I do build a lot of things that are blue in The Sims 4, and I've spent a lot of time kind of trying to think about why that is. Like, why am I just so drawn to all of the blue swatches in this game? 
I think half of it, and like the main reason, is just that a lot of the base game swatches are kind of ugly, but they all have a nice blue version. Blue is also like kind of a nice, like peaceful color. It's like almost a neutral, but it is a color, at least in my mind. But seriously, it is not my fault that like half of the base game swatches are terrible. I don't know what they were thinking, but like the early Sims 4 days really had the worst swatches. They've really improved recently with like the colors they've been picking, but you know all of the base game sets, like the base game couch and like the bar stools and, and like all of those main base game items that have like all the same swatches? Some of them are so bad. There's like a nightmarish magenta color, there's like a really horrible yellow, and I love the color yellow. I really like yellow furniture, like I would put it everywhere if there was good swatches, but there's no like pastels or even nice mustards. It's just this like lemon color, <laughs> and that is the only one that we have. We don't even have like a nice light gray or like, there's just not any neutrals. It's it's just like nightmare colors or blue. So I, I end up using a lot of blue, which obviously um, you can see here I have done like literally everywhere. The other thing that I did that I kind of liked was trying to match the landscaping to the area around us. You can kind of see in the back, there is a lot of plants surrounding this lot and there's a lot of like purpley, lavendery type bushes. So I kind of tried to mimic that to the best of my ability just to make it blend in a little bit better. I didn't want to come in and just use a bunch of like random orange flowers. I guess I was almost kind of imagining that like this whole area belongs to us. Like obviously in the game, the lines, the edges of the lot are like the edge of your property, but you can kind of pretend that like surrounding out from that also belongs to you. So I wanted to pretend that like kind of the half circle was our property and the house was just kind of centered on it. So I made sure the front landscaping kind of blended in everywhere else. It's not exact, like it isn't like the exact same identical plants, but it looks kind of similar and I feel like it fits in pretty well. And oh my goodness, the other like kind of annoying thing that I did to make stuff fit better was try and use these little like debug panels. There's a bunch of debug fences that we have that are like basically fake fences and I was trying to dig through them to find stuff that I could use to like blend in all these half walls because I used half walls like everywhere here. Again, because those houses in the pictures that I was using as inspo had a lot of stuff like that. So I wanted to do it too, but our half walls are like so stark and like so boxy. I feel like the ones in real life, they're kind of smooth. Obviously the top is the same as the sides, but ours have these like stark white tops to them. It just, they kind of looked weird. So I was trying to find things like those little edge corner pieces that I could use to make it look a bit nicer. And I really like how the edge pieces look. They were also extremely annoying to place because I was trying to put them like on all these platforms. And as you probably know, platforms are extremely annoying in this game. So they kept like jumping and placing in weird areas, but I managed to make it work. I should probably stop pointing out things that are like wrong with the build, but you might notice in a few areas, they're like kind of off. They're like a little bit more forward than I would like them to be. And that's just because of the stupid platforms. I couldn't put them in like the exact right place. So I just gave up. But if you look at it from the front, it looks fine. Just from the side, they're like kind of too far to the front and not like centered on the wall. The other kind of annoying thing is that the pergola is actually clipping onto the inside of the house. We have that beautiful pergola, which by the way is base game. A lot of people ask me like, what is that? Where is that from? What pack is that? It's not a pack. It's just in the base game. They added that in an update like a couple years ago and it is stunning. It is really nice, but I wanted it to like blend into the roof line a little bit. So I scooted it right up against the edge of the house and then it's clipping onto the inside of the house. And I don't think that it matters that much. Like it kind of looks okay once I furnish the bedroom, but I will acknowledge that it it's clipping <laughs> and I can see that it's clipping. Sometimes with the Sims, you gotta just like accept this stuff, you know? Like I can't do anything about this. It looks bad, but like if I just pretend it's not happening and, and just say, oh, it looks cute. Maybe you'll start to believe it, you know? And when I say you, I mean me. Maybe if I just keep telling myself it's okay, I'll start to believe that it's fine and it'll be fine. I get really hung up on like little small things in The Sims like that, like these little tiny things clipping or being like ever so slightly off and I just can't do anything about it. So there's no point stressing about it. Oh my goodness. One of the other things that was brought up a lot when I was streaming this build was the stair railings. I built this live on Twitch, by the way. I do most of my builds that are like speed builds like this on my Twitch channel first. So if you want to pop in, my name's just Lil Simsy on Twitch and I stream every day and I do a lot of Sims on there, especially a lot of Sims building. So if you want to come hang out with us, please feel free. I'll have it linked down below. But like I said, the stair railings were a major talking point because I tried really hard to use them. I tried like almost every variant in the game and I just could not find one that I liked. What I really wanted was like basically the wall to extend up and I wanted like the wall to be the railing, but just be like perfectly flat and smooth with the rest of the walls. I wanted it to blend in perfectly. And we do have a like wall tech 
texture looking railing in the base game, but the color is off. It didn't match anything. So I tried to use it. I had it there first and I ended up just deciding to get rid of it because I didn't like how it looked. So in the end, there's no railings on these stairs, which is maybe not the best thing, but you can just pretend there's like a railing attached to the wall. Okay, it's fine. It's on the other side. It's attached to the wall. You can hold on there and, and it's fine. Luckily, it's The Sims. There is no like safety regulations or like building code. It doesn't matter. It's it's just the game. I bring this up though and, and I look stressed saying it because the other day I built this a couple days ago and on that very next day after I had made the decision to not include stair railings on my Sims build and kind of said, haha, it's The Sims. It's fine. It doesn't matter. Guess who fell down the stairs in her house the very next day? Me. I did. I fell down the stairs. I don't think you understand how bad this was. I like completely wiped out on the stairs. Basically, my staircase kind of like wraps around like a lot of them do. So there's like one main part, kind of a landing, and then three stairs. Just three that go down to the very bottom of the stairs. I fell down those bottom three, luckily not the main stairs, so it was only three stairs. But I like turned the corner, grabbed the landing, went to go down the first step, completely missed the step, and just like slid down all of the stairs, landed on them, and then landed again on the floor. Oh my god, and there's video of it. That's what makes it worse. I've got a bunch of security cameras like around the outside of my house, but I also have a couple inside. Like I have one facing towards the front door because I am exceptionally paranoid. I think I'm justified in that though, but luckily or perhaps unluckily for me, there is a camera facing towards the front door, and it also happens to be viewing the staircase. So there is security camera footage of me completely falling down these stairs. And look, it at the time when it first happened, it was not funny. Like I sort of sat there on the floor for a second trying to process what had just happened to me. And then I like get up and like kind of hurry away and like go into my bedroom. And I went and cried because I, I wasn't necessarily like severely injured. I was just kind of in shock, you know? I'm okay, I'm bruised. There's a giant bruise on my leg. I've got a bruise on my arm from where I hit the stairs and like this arm kind of hurts because I was holding onto the handrail and then I like twisted and pulled my arm because I fell despite still holding onto the handrail. But I'm okay, like it could have been way worse. In the video, it looks like I hit my head. I did not. I am I am luckily safe in that regard. But like I was saying, it wasn't funny at the time. It is very funny now. You are absolutely allowed to laugh because when I saw the video, I posted it on TikTok because I was like so amused at this. I'm gonna play it right here for you. This is the video of me falling down the stairs. <laughs> I told you, I told you it's so funny. I like completely slid down all of them. I was like, my body was like straight. My arm was like way up. It was really bad. Um, But anyway, that's that's what I get for not including a stair railing in my Sims build. So I learned my lesson. It's just, it's the fact that I was even holding onto the hand railing as well. Like my hand was on the rail. You can see it in the video and I still fell. Ever since that, a couple days ago, I have been extremely careful going up and down the stairs. I've always been careful going up and down the stairs because I've always been kind of clumsy. Like I have hardwood stairs now, which is maybe exceptionally dangerous, but even in my old house, we had carpeted stairs. I still fell like a bunch of times. So I think it's just, un it's just not safe for me. I'm not, I'm not a stair person. I can't be trusted on them, but I have really been like exceptionally careful on the stairs the past couple days. I've been like very slowly putting one foot at a time, watching exactly where I'm stepping because I am not safe. Oh, also my cat is in here. I didn't mention that. <laughs> I just heard her move and I was like, oh yeah, she's back there. So if you see um that and think what is that thing it's a it's a cat okay stair situation aside we're actually starting to furnish the house now and you can see i have really really embraced this blue color scheme on the inside i at this point it was kind of a meme like my stream title was not a blue suburban i might even title this video not a blue suburban <laughs> because it is it is a very blue house but almost as a joke and i think it's pretty and it also it, it's allowed because it fits the style okay okay but it's kind of split leveled in here it's actually kind 
of cool. We have like the main level where the entrance is. That's because I raised up like the courtyard onto a platform. So the front door is on a platform and then you step down into the TV room and you step down into like the bedroom and kitchen area. I think I like the kitchen and dining space the most because there's like a really cool step down and then this beautiful tile where we have like this nice wooden kitchen and we have this pretty dining table. I was kind of going for like white, blue, and wood <laughs> as the color schemes in here. Actually, we also have two living rooms. And this part where this like patterned blue rug is was the hardest part of the entire house for me to furnish. I don't know what it was, but I just really didn't know what I wanted to put there. I swear I tried like every couch and every chair in the game. I was thinking like it could be a second dining room. We could have a piano. We could have just like a second living space. Like I really didn't know what to put there. And I was having a really hard time trying to space it out because I put the main living space or like the TV room downstairs, like down that little nook because it had more wall space. So it made more sense for a TV. But this room was just kind of in the middle, but it was also like a major walkway because it's how you got to the stairs. And it was like right by the front door. So I just really didn't know how to furnish it. I feel like in real life, I also would have had a very hard time trying to furnish that space just because it is like a major walkway. It's almost like a big giant hallway, but it's also huge. So you want to put something there. And I do think that it turned out okay in the end. It's definitely not bad. It could, it could probably be better, but I feel like that um, could be said of like the entire interior. I was really happy with the outside and then the inside. I was like, I don't know what color to use because I really wanted to use those like round blue curtains. We have like those really pretty curtains in the base game that fit those arched windows perfectly. So I really wanted to use them, but the color was kind of off. It's like almost a bit purpley. It's like kind of a periwinkle. So it didn't really match a lot of the other blue things that we had in the game. So I kind of was struggling. And that's why I sort of just accepted that, you know what? Sometimes things aren't gonna match and sometimes things are gonna clip and it's The Sims 4 and it's fine. And it honestly, it looks fine. It's okay. <laughs> if you just embrace it, it, it's fine. Okay, but downstairs here, we have the primary suite. It has like its own bathroom attached as well. It's like right behind the kitchen. And actually directly above this is the grandparents suite. But it's kind of cool because that second floor one isn't actually attached to the main house. It's like through a hallway outside. And I really, really liked that about it. I feel like if you wanted to actually play in this house, I, I'm thinking about my own gameplay. I would probably, at least right now, end up using it for like a, a grandparent sim to live in just because I'm playing a legacy challenge and I've got like a bunch of grandparents living with me right now. But once they died, I might use it as like an art studio. It could be like a home gym. Honestly, just any sort of like skill thing that your sim needs for their career or whatever, it would totally fit there. And it's cool because it's like fancy, it's attached, but it's big and there's plenty of space for your stuff. I always joke about this, but like you could totally put a cupcake machine in there if you wanted to. And where else are you going to put that? The thing is enormous. Where else is that going to go if not the grandparents suite? And then when I started furnishing the rest of the upstairs, like the main upstairs, that's where I was really struggling because I guess I didn't really know what like the goal of the house was. I was sort of like half building it for a family and then half building it as a vacation home. So I wasn't really sure like who was going to live here in these kids bedrooms. Like did I want to make a sort of like generic guest bedroom or did I want to make like a more personalized teens bedroom? Like I kind of just didn't know what I was going for. In the end, I think I sort of settled on like an in-between. I feel like me and my Twitch chat were kind of joking that it was like a vacation home, but it belonged to a family. <laughs> so they don't live here full time, but like there is personalized bedrooms because, you know, they come visit a lot. So that was kind of what I was going for. I still wanted it to like apply to a lot of different Sims, but also look like someone actually like is in this room. Maybe like a young person is actually in this room. In the footage that you're gonna see, this room is like very heavily like high school pack, teen bedroom, very cutesy star rug, personalized. And then the bedroom next door is like very bland, shared double bedroom for kids. And that's where I really had that dilemma of like, wait a minute, is this like a, a vacation house or does somebody live here? I felt like I furnished it like it was two separate houses. So don't worry, after the footage was over, after I stopped recording, I went back in and like totally edited a little bit with the decor and color scheme. And I think it looks a lot better. So I will show you that when I do the tour of the build. But in here, I tried to use a bunch of clutter and like computers and decor and stuff. I will say that I started off this build trying to kind of limit packs. I was using like mostly the wedding pack and like jungle adventure. And then once I started furnishing, I it was just, it was all over the place. It was all over the place. I even used outdoor retreat, believe it or not, because I used plants from that pack. But yeah, this, um, this second kid's bedroom, I feel like you can already tell it just... <laughs> 
<laughs> it is so much more bland, so much more plain than the than the teenage bedroom was. It's the star rug. I think the star rug was throwing it off. I ended up switching it to being white, the rug, and I think it did help a lot. I love the star rug. I love the idea of it. I just felt like in this particular house, it, it just didn't work. There was like something about it that just wasn't like meshing well or something. So I ended up changing it. And also surprisingly, I had to cut this out because it took me so long to figure out the hallway, the upstairs hallway, I think was the hardest part of this entire house for me to furnish. I guess because I didn't really know like what to put up there. This is gonna sound silly, but it like wasn't really big enough for me to put a computer in. <laughs> and I always put computers in my hallways. It was just kind of tight. So I wanted to have like a chair and like a bookshelf or some place to sit. And it just, it, it wasn't really fitting right. So what you just saw there, I ended up deleting and, and like completely redoing. So I'll show you in the tour now. We're kind of like winding down the speed build here and finishing up some final touches. And I'm gonna pop back into the game and show you everything for real because I, I changed some stuff and I like cut out the bathrooms from this and I, I don't know, the footage, it like turns and spins too fast. So it's kind of hard to follow sometimes. So I'm loading into my game now. You have to give it a second because it's The Sims 4 and sometimes it takes a minute. I built this one in Tartosa, like I mentioned, and it's way up here kind of by the waterfall. I told you, it is really beautiful in the front of this lot. So here is the finished product of the house. I am so happy with this. I kind of want to come and like play in it because I love how the outside looks so much. This is what I was talking about by like how beautiful the view is from the front. Ignore the back, okay? Don't look at this, but <laughs> look at how pretty it is out here. When you first walk up, we have like the mailbox and a little walkway. There's even a fountain in the front and there's kind of a bunch of different like outdoor sections. We've got like this little area with like an outdoor table. We've got this one by the front door. There's like an outdoor fire pit. We've got a bar right here. And I was joking a lot about how I made this room with like the big open windows. They don't even close, there's no glass. That's the bedroom, like the primary bedroom. And there's just a bar right outside of it. But at least the people sitting at the bar aren't facing the bedroom. They're like sat here facing the water, luckily. And then over here we have the pool and like some lounge chairs. And there's an extra staircase that goes upstairs. This part right here, I really love like the different layers here and like this little courtyard. Also this part, like this covered walkway in between the two upstairs, I think is pretty cool. I'll take any excuse for a place to put a chess table, to be honest. So I got to put one there. When you actually walk into the house downstairs, there's like a little entranceway right here. This is that like sort of formal sitting area over here. I put some bookshelves. I kind of tried to put clutter on this so they didn't look like they were two identical bookshelves, but they are two identical bookshelves. Back here, I almost put a computer, but I ended up putting just like a little hallway into the bathroom. And then down here is like the main TV room, which my sim seems to be already using. Over to the left, we've got the kitchen and we also have like a little dining space. I really, really like the color scheme of this. I think this tile backsplash looks so beautiful in here. And this is also just wide open out to the patio. And then back here, we've got the main primary bedroom and their ensuite bathroom. Neither of these rooms are huge, but I think that's okay. They're like very cozy inside. And then if you go upstairs, we've got that hallway that for some reason gave me so much trouble, but I think looks okay now. There's a really tiny bathroom up here. It's just like a toilet and a sink. There wasn't really a lot of space for a bigger one. And we're like right up at the edge of the lot. So I couldn't really add a bigger one. So that's all we've got in there. And then we have the first like teenage bedroom right here, which I really, really like the purple and blue of. And then we have that second kids room, which I changed a lot from the video. I put this wallpaper instead and I think it really helped. It looks like way more personalized now. And then all the way across the side, we have that like grandparents suite. So they have just like a little bedroom kind of. And then all the way across the side, we have that little grandparents suite. So they have like a little bedroom, they've got their own bathroom and they have two of their own private entrances. So it's kind of cool. They kind of have their own like outdoor space as well with this little patio. It's it's a nice amount of space here on this lot. I feel like I used the whole thing pretty well. And it is decidedly not a blue suburban, which is nice. On that note, I think I'm gonna end this video right here. Thank you for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the build. And if you like Sims builds, I do a lot of building here on my YouTube channel. So feel free to subscribe so you don't miss the next one and follow my Twitch channel so you can watch this kind of thing live. I'll have that kind of stuff linked down below for you and I'll catch you all tomorrow. Okay, bye everybody. I hate to say it, but Tartosa really is like such a beautiful world. It like really is the saving grace of that wedding pack. It is the only good thing.